Let's talk about the Xperia 1 uh, Mark III. And no, I'm not talking about the leaks. You can watch What Gears video about the Xperia 1 Mark III leaks and that the design is has like slightly shrunken and it's a bit thicker and they, they for some reason thought it's a good idea to add a Google Assistant button to the yeah almost bottomless site. Um, no, I'm talking about the backside and the new camera, the periscope camera. And what does it mean? So it's interesting to see that Sony is adding a periscope camera. They never had one. And uh, the periscope cameras usually are used for higher zoom range as what you would expect on the Xperia 1, the Xperia 1 Mark II that had a 17 millimeters equivalent, so almost three times zoom, as well as the Xperia 5 Mark II that I'm filming this with, by the way, filming with the Cinema Pro app here and controlled uh, environment and uh, using an external microphone and the headphones that came with the Xperia. So what I want to talk about is the periscope zoom. What does it mean, first of all? First of all, periscope zooms are usually used not for three times zoom, just like on the Xperia 5 or the Xperia 1. They're usually used for higher class zooms, like five times zoom at least. So I would say the Xperia 1 Mark III will come within five times zoom range. But what does it mean for photographers? Usually the 17 millimeters zoom, the almost three times that's on the Xperia 5 and the Xperia 1, uh, Mark 1 and Mark 2, it's very useful if you want to do portrait shots because you can get very close to the subject, have a nice background blur and you know, capture the face. But a five time zoom this is when you want to capture the nose hairs eventually or the eyes are uh, not very useful for portraits or you have to go even more back and then maybe you have a like slightly background. It's a bit awkward, let's say it like this. So why would Sony do this with this periscope zoom and why is it a little bit thicker? Is it only because of the periscope zoom? It could be, of course, but my theory behind this is it is slightly different. But how different? I think what they could do is add a variable periscope zoom. So where they have one lens in the periscope zoom that can move left or right to change the zoom level from three times that you need for portraits to five times that you need for close-ups of something. I don't know, squirrels or something like this that you want to photograph. Or even videograph. Shout out to camera, Cameras Conspiracies. Um, so does this work? It would, in theory. The problem is, of course, the sensor. Because if you have this, perfectly aligned for the sensor three times zoom if you zoom in and you're cropping in to the sensor as well a little bit so what you have to have is like a very high megapixel count sensor but gladly Sony has this Sony has a 48 megapixel or even 64 megapixel sensor where they could just simply have the best quality at three times zoom because they use pixel binning technology on the sensor side where they just simply bind together those pixels to have a better light, low light and uh, capabilities and so on. So very good for portraits. But if they zoom in, they're cropping in on the sensor, but if, because they have so much uh, pixels there, they can still get an eight or 12 megapixel or even 10 megapixel uh, image out of it for five times zoom. That could still look good. And yeah, of course, maybe the aperture has to change as well a little bit, it depends. And maybe they don't want to use this uh, like kind of zoom because it might yeah develop some problems over time they could also use some simple lens uh, flapping like this like a door this is the normal three times lens and then they have like another two times lens and that could flap down uh, if this is maybe easier i don't know um, or they have like one three times zoom that flips up and another one that flips down which is five times everything's possible um, Anyway, this is not like rocket science to develop. Maybe it is. I don't know. It is a, it's a hardware feature, nevertheless. I want to stay a little bit at the hardware features because what I want really for the Xperia 1 Mark III is like some kind of ND filter. Either 
uh, really physical ND filters. So either they use the technology they have on the RX100 line and at least one little layer of ND for the main camera, for the main sensor eventually only, that you can turn on for such filming like here. If the sun is in the background, it's probably ever, ever the overblown highlights and so on and I hope my face is still visible and not too dark. So it's very hard to film without an ND filter uh, with the Cinema Pro app and it would be very very cool if Sony would implement some kind of physical ND filter. But what it can also do is of course improve the software so much that they have some like I don't know software ND filtering system built in. There are some features, there are some possibilities already uh, in the AI world. There are some uh, technologies I think Huawei is using it, Samsung is using it for silky water-like effect and this is usually also done with ND filters so they're using some software algorithms to support this. Huawei uh, can do this, Samsung can do this, why Sony cannot do this. And the same goes for some annoyances that I'm talking month uh, in and out already. The standard, the default camera application needs to be a lot better. DxO Mark is apparently testing only this. So if you want to have good high DxO Mark scores and have a good public opinion, uh, even more people don't test your hardware really, uh, get this software done. It needs to be it, ha it needs to have like stabilization on par with all the other flagships all the chinese brands are better all uh, the korean brands are better uh, apple is better everyone is better at stabilizing shots in their smartphone on their flagships at least than sony so sony please do something uh, even if you don't want it for certain reasons like professionals oh, we don't want stabilization or we need like only this this much stabilization otherwise it introduces some um, blah 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 then um, just put in an option like intelligent active I think it was called before in the Xperia lineup why not adding it in back we want first class stabilization on your uh, smartphone so we can run around and don't have to sit down here and do like the poor man's vlogging style so um, this is one thing another thing is like this audio I like to really use the default camera application because it has auto exposure up and down so you can run around here I don't have to control my environment so much and the lighting around me it can just do everything automatically I really want something that works Sony automatically automatically if you don't do this then you will lose a lot of consumers and the, it's a niche although you're targeting a niche only and even this niche has some kind of convenience level expectation and I have for once the expectation that I can plug in my fat the headphones or my microphone in there and record and it's using the microphone I have this need it needs to be in the standard default Sony camera application and it's only a few lines of code Sony it's not like rocket science that you have to develop it for one year or something like this and test it for one year it is really easy you have it already in your cinema pro app why not adding it into the default camera application uh, or what you can also do is like improve the cinema pro app because i think the photo pro app is very very cool has lots of features of course you can improve here and there a few things maybe but the cinema pro app is like you once developed it and that's it there's two three new features added that's all but what about this important features just like auto exposure i know professionals they don't want it but I want it as consumers even professionals sometimes want this feature because they don't want to control the light all the time so please add it in make it optional so they, if they don't want it turn it off but please add it then the next thing is um, yeah cinema pro app I think the user interface needs an overhaul a little bit because it's too cumbersome and what I don't like really is if you're filming you don't have control of anything so at least give me the control of shutter speed or exposure control or something that allows me to do something same goes for sound control or something like this professionals for God's sakes you can of course do it like minimalist but don't strip away the features that we as vloggers, for example, need. So this is one very important thing that Sony needs to update, in my opinion. So software, software, software. And please don't release it only for the Mark III lineup. 
also give us the software updates for the Mark II lineup. We paid so much money for your phone. We expect it to be updated, not only security updates and Android updates. We also want the phone, the camera, the hardware is so good. Why not providing us with the software update to use this really good hardware to create better content? It is only a benefit for you because you can create a fan base. So if you do this once, I can promise you so many people that bought the Xperia 1 Mark II or 5 Mark II will be so much happier with your software that they will think, think okay, if the Xperia 1 Mark IV comes out, comes out, I will buy it because I trust Sony. But if you only release this new software in the new lineup, then people will run away and say, why? I bought this never ever again Sony because you don't provide the update for me. You're just telling me to buy a new phone to give to, to, to pay you again a thousand dollars or something like this for another a new phone that you don't update any anyway it will be replaced by a new model in one year and the software updates even no matter how trivial they are they will not give we won't give you the updates so please sony do it yeah this is basically everything for this video um a slight rant at the end i think I hope you enjoyed it. If you have some ideas, what you want to do, what you want to see in the Xperia 1 Mark III, write them down in the comment section. That's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.